The title of this study is Isolation of Probiotic Lactobacillus from Goat Milk and Evaluating Their Antagonistic Effect on Pathogens. The objective of this study are to isolate and identify lactobacillus from dairy product, and the second objective is to measure their antagonistic effect on pathogens. Here are some of the highlights from the literature review made. Firstly, lactobacillus species is a type of lactic acid bacteria strain that acts as a protective culture against pathogens. They can be isolated using selective medium where the medium will express the growth of unwanted microbes. A combination of demaragosa or MRS broth and distilled water can be the growth medium for lactobacillus species. Identification of this strain can be made using microbiology tests such as gram staining and oxidase catalyst tests where gram positive and catalyte negative strain will be selected for further assessment. With all the information, a thorough plan has been devised. It will start with sampling followed by serial dilution and spread plate. The sample then undergoes single isolation technique by strip plate and MRS broth culturing. Afterwards, they will undergo lab screening before biochemical tests such as gram staining and oxidase catalyst tests. Based on the results, selected strain will be used in antimicrobial tests. We start our experiment with sampling. We manage to get the sample from cold milk. We get the pure fresh cold milk because cold milk is one of the source of LAB, which is the probiotic lactobacillus that we desire. Preparation of MRS agar. We prepared the MRS agar to increase the growth of LAB bacteria as MRS agar is the selective media that can manage to supply the micro and macronutrient needed for lactobacillus to grow. We also prepare the MRS growth media for the antimicrobial test. Serial dilution method. First, before we start the experiment, we label the dilution factor on a couplet. In this experiment, we transfer 1 ml of the milk sample into test tube with 9 ml of distilled water. Then, we use the vortex to make it homogeneously. After that, we transfer the 1 ml from the previous test tube into another test tube. We repeat the step until 10 to the power of negative 6 dilution factor. The purpose of serial dilution that we made is to reduce the concentration of bacteria by specific amount. It also can make it easier for us to identify the desired bacteria. Spread plate method. Firstly, we pipette 1 ml of each test tube that contain the different dilution factor from the previous serial dilution to the label agar plate. Then, we use the hockey stick to spread it evenly on the agar plate and it is ready for incubate about 24 hours. Street plate tannic. Firstly, we sterilize the inoculating loop. Then, we cool down the loop by stab it in the agar. Then, we pick the colony on the spread plate that we culture and we strip on the new MRS agar plate.
Then we sterilize the loop after use and seal the plate with parafilm seal. Both spread and straight technique that we had done, we begin with an aseptic technique to avoid contamination. And now it is ready for incubation for about 24 to 48 hours in incubator. During this gram staining process, the materials needed are a Bunsen burner, a loop, a slide, and a gram staining reagents are needed. A sterile water are placed in the slide using a sterile loops. Next, a sterile loops are used to transfer a colony of bacteria from the agar plate to the slide and was heated gently. that drops of crystal violet strain drop into the wax circle. Next, rinse the slide with a water until most of the strain are washed off. After that, a few drops of iodine are added and wait for a few minutes and rinse the slide into the beaker of water until the color are washed off. The steps are repeated with acetone and saffronine. After the slides are dry, it is then placed under the microscope to do the morphological test. A purple stain indicates a gram-positive bacteria and a red or a pink stain indicates a gram-negative bacteria. Next is a catalyst test. During this catalyst test, 3% of hydrogen peroxide, an agar plate, and a bacteria cultures are needed. To perform this test, a drop of 3% hydrogen peroxide are placed on a slide. Using a sterile wooden stick, a single colony is picked and then swirled in a drop. If the bubbles are appeared, it is sure that it is a catalyst positive. Next is oxidase test. To perform this oxidase test, a wooden stick, filter paper, culture media, nutrient agar plate, and a freshly prepared tetramethyl phenylene diamine dehydrochloride are needed. Using a sterile wooden stick, a colony is picked and placed in a filter paper gently. Then, a drop of tetramethyl phenylene diamine dehydrochloride are placed on the filter paper. A purple color is appeared when it is sure oxidase positive. Next is antimicrobial test effects on pathogens. To perform the antimicrobial test effects on pathogens, sterile cotton swabs, lactobacillus broad cultures, nutrient agar plate, sterile paper leads, and forceps are needed. Use the sterile cotton swabs to take a single colony and inoculate a lawn on a nutrient agar plate by spreading the bacteria evenly. Next, sterile paper leads are placed in the plates. And lastly, the plates are placed in the incubator for 24 to 48 hours. Next, I will bring you to observe the result together. As you know, at the method part, we have two tests which is biochemical test and antimicrobial test. In biochemical test, we have cream staining, 
catalysis and oxidizers. Firstly, for cream staining, we have the figure under 1000 time magnification. Take a look at this. You will see the morphology after the cream staining. It shows the bacteria stain purple color, straight, occurring single, pair, and in short chain. It also not spore forming. Next, catalyst test. From this, we can observe there is no bubble formation. So, it is catalyst negative reaction indicate that the presence of lactobacillus. Oxidase test. From this figure show you, there are also absence of coloration. The test show negative indicate that presence of lactobacillus can be moved to antimicrobial test to know antimicrobial effect to E. coli. From this figure, you will see inhibition zone on E. coli strain which is 0157H7. After we measure the growth of inhibition, it shows 9mm of clear zone around the teeth. Hectobacillus undergoes fermentative process. However, being a facultative anaerobe, it can grow in either anaerobic condition, which is without oxygen, or aerobic condition, which is with oxygen. Lactobacillus is also a homo-fermentative bacterium. In aerobic condition, oxygen present as the final exogenous electron acceptor with the study focus on L palantrum. The first is cream staining. Based on observation, bacteria in the goat milk give purple color under the light microscope with thousand magnification when undergoing gram staining. Thus, we determine that bacteria in the goat milk is gram positive. The shape of the cell is road shape, straight, occurring as singly, pairs and short chains, and they are non-spore forming bacteria. The next is the distribution method, or known as Kirby-Bio method, that has been used in this test. The aim of this test is to measure the ability of an antimicrobial agent, which is lactobacillus, to inhibit the growth of microorganism, which is E. coli. Based on the result. There is clear area around the disc against the dense growth zone of E. coli surrounding which it has a diameter of 9 mm. This is known as the inhibition zone. The E. coli is susceptible to the lactobacillus forming an inhibition zone which appear on the agar plate. The lactobacillus diffuse further causing its concentration to be reduced after a certain point until the concentration is at its lowest. Thus, it can no longer inhibit the growth of the E. coli. The diameter of this inhibition zone determines the effectiveness of the lactobacillus. The larger the diameter, the greater will be the effectiveness of the lactobacillus is at inhibiting the E. coli.